Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, thanks so much for stopping by. Please hit the subscribe button and the bell so you'll be notified of future videos. So in my last video, we made Never Fail Pie Crust. I hope that that is on your to-do list to try. It's an easy pie crust to make, it's forgiving, it's wonderful to work with, and just really fantastic to have in your arsenal. We did that recipe because so many of you have contacted me and said that I need help with pie crust. It's something I find really difficult and nothing that ever works out for me. So hopefully you will give that recipe a try and it will be a success for you. I'm sure it will be. It's a great recipe. But in that video, I did a little teaser and told you that we were going to be using that pie crust to make an amazing cranberry apple pie. And I'm so excited to share this recipe with you. This pie, I found the recipe on the website for Lodge Cast Iron. If you have hung around my channel very much, you guys know I am a lover of Lodge Cast Iron. I like to pop on over to their website every now and then, check out their recipes. They have fantastic recipes over there and I'll make sure to link their website for you so you can take a peek or get yourself some really nice cast iron for your kitchen. Anyway, they had a recipe there for apple cranberry pie. And as I was scrolling through the ingredients, they had some unusual ingredients in it, so I just had to try it. And I thought that the pie was just amazing. It would be fantastic for Thanksgiving or for Christmas. It just screams holiday. And of course, it has apples in it. It has cranberries. It has orange zest, which I thought was a little unusual, but amazingly delicious. The other ingredient that I thought was unusual is coarsely chopped pecans. Who knew, right? But they add delicious texture to the pie. And just the whole combination of all those flavors, apple, cranberry, the nuts, and the orange in the background was just phenomenal. So you guys are really gonna love this recipe. I did do a little bit of carol tweaking. If you've hung around very much, you know that I love to do that, so I added a few touches of my own. It is a deep dish recipe, so you need a deep dish pie plate. I'm using my Henry Emil pie plate, which I will link for you in the description box. We're also going to be using some boiled cider in the recipe. If you're not familiar with boiled cider, I will leave an I card here and a link to a video in the description box that talks all about boiled cider. If you've hung around my channel very much, you guys know that I love making boiled cider this time of year and it is fantastic to use in any apple recipe. Uh, just amps up that apple flavor, just really great. If you do not have boiled cider on hand, that's fine. You can use apple juice concentrate from the grocery store. No worries. So lots of great ingredients. We've already got our pie crust made, so we are good to go. I'm gonna bring you in close and we're gonna get started. Okay guys, here we go. Really easy stuff here. We're going to take two tablespoons of butter and put it in a nice big skillet. And you want this over about a medium heat. To that, we are going to add a cup and a half of cranberries. We are going to take a cup of sugar and we're gonna stir in two teaspoons, or I'm sorry, two tablespoons of flour and three tablespoons of cornstarch. And we're gonna stir that into our sugar. You could whisk it if you wanted to, but I find just mixing it with a spoon is fine. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add that. We're gonna add some dried spices. I have one teaspoon of cinnamon, a half a teaspoon of nutmeg, and a quarter of a teaspoon of allspice, but you can use whatever spices you like in your apple pie. I'm also gonna add the zest of one orange. I used a navel orange. It's gonna be about two teaspoons of orange zest. And then we need a quarter of a cup of boiled cider. Yum, yum. I'm just gonna give that a stir. And we're just gonna cook this over a medium heat until our cranberries start to pop and our sugar dissolves. It will also start to thicken because we have our thickener in here as well. Okay, you can see that we've got some bubbling going on and our cranberries, you can hear them, they've started to pop. We want our cranberries to soften a bit and we want the sauce to start to thicken. Okay, once it starts bubbling and your cranberries are popped open and started to thicken, we're gonna turn off the heat. We are going to add two teaspoons of vanilla extract. I'm using my homemade pure vanilla extract. Two teaspoons of that. We're gonna stir in eight cups of thinly sliced apples. I'm using Honeycrisp. Crisp. 
and we want to coat our apples. Then we're going to stir in about a third of a cup of coarsely chopped pecans. You could use walnuts if you prefer. We want, we just want a third of a cup of coarsely chopped nuts. Give that a quick stir and then we are ready to assemble our pie. Okay guys, I have filled my pie and you can tell my deep dish pie is really full. I went ahead and rolled out my top crust. So now I'm just going to use my rolling pin to help me put it on top of my pie. Okay, so I have my top crust on and I do have a couple of holes where I had bigger chunks of butter. If that happens, do not panic. It's not a big deal. You can just pinch it back together. We need some vents anyway for our top crust. So if, it, if you have a little hole, it is not the end of the world. It will still be beautiful. Now, usually I just cobble my crust up and then pinch my edges. I have quite a bit on this one, so I am gonna cut some of it off. And then I'm gonna press it together with my bottom crust. You could wet the crust if you, the bottom crust if you want to with a little bit of water, um, but it's not necessary because it has the egg in it. It's, it uh, sticks together really well. Then once you have your top and your bottom crust stuck together, then do like I showed you in my last video and just make a pretty fluted edge. You could roll out another thing of pie crust and do a fancy edge if you want to. I really just prefer the fluted edge that just speaks pie to me. Um, so I just go around and do like I showed you with the pinch method. I think it's pretty and it's timeless. There. Now, isn't that beautiful? Now we do need some vents. Like I said, I've got a little hole there from where my butter came apart. Uh, so you just wanna cut um, a couple of vents, a few vents. I do eight, usually six or eight. And if you want to, you can brush the top of it with cream or with milk or with an egg wash just to give it a pretty finish, but I don't think it needs it. I just prefer it nice and plain. It will brown beautifully on its own. So now I'm going to put it in a preheated 425 degree oven. I am gonna place my pie plate on top of a baking sheet coated with parchment paper. I'm gonna put it in a preheated 425 degree oven for 15 minutes, and then I'm gonna reduce the heat to 375. The other thing that I wanna note is I always bake my pies on the bottom rack. That makes sure that they get nice and done on the bottom and you don't have a soggy pie. That seems to work for me. I know there are other methods out there that people like to use, but that's the method I use. So bottom rack, 425 for 15 minutes, reduce the heat to 375, and then we're gonna bake it until it's golden brown and bubbling um, through your vents. That should take another 45 minutes or so. Okay guys, it's getting late in the day, so I'm trying to work, wrap up my video here. Um, you really should let your pie cool completely uh, before you cut it. So it's gonna be a little bit on the runny side, but if you let it cool completely, it will set up for you perfectly. But I wanted to show it to you. I just wanted to reiterate that I did bake it at 425 for 15 minutes, and then I reduced the heat to 375, baked it for another 45 minutes, and it was perfection. So look at that. Does that not look delicious? Look at that flaky crust. You see how flaky that is? And you can even hear the flakiness. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. And then you've got those beautiful apples, delicious cranberries, and that orange in the background is fantastic. The nuts provide just a little bit extra texture, but you know, the proof is always in the taste. So let's give it a quick taste here. Uh, one of the things that people say is a common problem for them is they're getting their bottom crust done so that it's not soggy. I don't ever have that problem when I bake it on my bottom rack. So anyway, it's not soggy, it's perfect. Mm, the orange, you get that at the end it's just fantastic. But again, see how flaky that is? See that flaky crust? Perfection. 
So I hope you will give the Never Fail Pie Crust a try. I will leave an iCard and a link in the description box for you. Make this pie, you guys. It just screams holiday. It has all of those delicious flavors all rolled into one delicious, beautiful pie. I hope you'll give it a try. Thanks for coming along with me today. If you have any comments or questions, leave them for me in the comment section. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and I will see you next time. Have a great day.